everybody. Welcome to Table Talk, a place for honest conversations and meeting friends. Y'all, I'm Betsy Thompson. So excited to be here with the one, the only, Brother Chuck. Hey, Betsy. Hey, y'all. Chuck Schneider is, if you've been around Sagemont, you know Brother Chuck. And we're just so thankful that you're going to get to hang out today, that I get another chance to do this with you. I love getting to sit down and chat with you. And really, today, you're coming specifically because you're getting ready to retire. This is true. Which, That's the rumor. Okay, look at the smile and little <laughs> glimmer in your eye. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so I know, um, just because I've, I've talked with you about, this is not a sudden decision. This is something that you've been looking at and preparing for been a five-year process yes and yes. i think that's so good for our church family to know that really this has been something um that you have been purposing toward training people up leading and leaving an amazing legacy and leaving so good that this isn't like a hey y'all i'm done i'm you know you have been so good about showing how to do this well well, I don't know about that. I just know it's been a five-year process for Maureen and I and myself. And it, it really began when we began to process Brother John's retirement mm -hmm. and transition. And uh, I was right at 65 at that time. And that's usually when most Americans think about right. Social Start Security, about retirement, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Sometimes it's forced on them. And so it became a real conversation for Maureen and myself. And she even asked, what, what are you thinking? Right. And I said, Maureen... I, I feel called of the Lord to get us through the transition. Right. And I'm not exactly sure how long that's going to take, but that calling was as clear mm -hmm. as the calling into the ministry. Right. It, it was that clear. And I felt compelled to get Sagemont through a transition. And that wasn't easy with Brother John and, yes. and all that he has meant to, to Sagemont mm -hmm. Church. And so I said, I, I can tell you that that may be a one or two year process. I'm not sure. And I'm 65. Yeah. And I said, uh, I'm willing to do it through one or two years, but I, I don't know that I'm willing to do it beyond three or four years. And I said, I know that at 70, I want to have the airplane landed. And right. that was a conversation five years ago. Right. And so I guess the rest is history. In this, what, July 19th, right? That's Ju your birthday? Birthday is July 18th. 18th, yes. and how old are you going to be? 70 years 70. old. 70. Yes. So, and, and so when Matt go. got here, mm -hmm. he asked specifically, right. would you give us a date? And I, I said, well, if you're looking for a date, you know, I, I will stay with the date I gave Maureen, and that would be <laughs> outside was birthday when I turned 70. Yeah. And that's what I announced to the church right. when, when Matt was mm -hmm. here. And so... This is just a continuation of that process, yeah. and uh, and and specifically some. And it's part of your question to me yeah. about the experience. Yeah. Uh, specifically, three things culminated to help me to know now yeah. is the time. And first and foremost, not not first and foremost, actually on the table was the physical realities. The physical realities were not make-believe. They were sure. very, very real in both Maureen's life and in my life. Absolutely. And uh, she had cancer. I had cancer. I had a heart attack. She's having heart problems. Right. I took a drug that blew up the tendons in my foot. Yes. All of that was yes. in, in a season. Yes. And the, the physical realities have kind of compounded here in the latter stages of my physical life. Yeah. And that's normal. Paul calls our body tents, right. and I love that metaphor because <laughs> tents speak of temporary, yeah. and tents leak the older they get. And he uses that metaphor of our body like mm. tents, and I have found out the older you get, the more the tent leaks. And so <laughs> it's, it's just a reality yeah. in this season of life. We have had physical right. hiccups that aren't, aren't make-believe. They are real, and they kind of help you— um, do a gut check about life and living. Mm -hmm. You know, when Paul says to live as Christ, to die is gain. When I was 20 something, I never comprehended right. that. Right. Now that I'm right at 70, I see that, yeah. you know, I, I think about that. Right. And the physical limitations were part of it. And, and the other physical limitation is the ears. Yeah. I can't hear anymore, Betsy. Yeah. It's just a reality. Right. Um, it's gotten worse. Mm -hmm. And when Brother John would ask all hands on deck, we're going to do an altar call. And I want all my ministers up front. Right. And I'd have to go to him and say, John, I can't do it. Right. You got background noise in the back and some little old lady sweet could come up and, and, and whisper in my ear right. what she wants me to pray with her about. And I'm yelling, what? Yeah. <laughs> just didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work. And it's gotten worse. Yeah. You know, in, in the five years, it's gotten worse. And so yeah. I used to bait the class with Bible study class with questions. 
times and we would have dialogue. Right. I couldn't do that for the last decade. I couldn't do it mm -hmm. because I can't hear what they're asking. And so those physical limitations uh, were not make-believe. Sure. They are real. Absolutely. And I've had to come to grips with that. Mm -hmm. and, and then secondary behind that is is the word fellowship, which which connects to the word leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember succinctly being a young minister here at age 30 and 35 and looking across the table at uh, Ralph Edwards, who was our minister of education. Mm -hmm. And um, Betsy, I can just confess to you, I would look across the table and would think something like, if that old man would just get out of the way, we could do some great things here oh, around Sagemont. Yeah. Forgive me, Brother Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. But I remember thinking sure. that, you know, and, and uh, it's the way you think when you're 20 and 30 and 35. I mean, what did you think of somebody when they were 70 when you were 25? Right. Yes. You, usually you think, that's an old person. That's old. <laughs> yeah. The older you get, the younger but, everyone. Exactly. Yes, it makes so a difference. I, I confess my... My thinking was sure. along those lines. Mm -hmm. And and so I'll use the word fellowship. I've told you what I would think about Ralph when he would lead meetings right. when I was 35 and he was my age now. And a few years ago, I'm John's executive pastor and I'm leading meetings and that's continued. Sure. And I remember looking across the table at some of the young guys that we have on staff. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, that's exactly the same look I used to give <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> I said, I know that look. Right. It used to yes. be me. Yeah. And so when it when it comes to leadership, you have to look in terms of followship. Yeah. And uh, right, wrong, or indifferent, things change as you move into a different season of mm -hmm. life. And uh, it behooves individuals to come to grips with that. Yeah. And so I'm telling you, what were the impetuses? Physical realities, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. uh, followship. Number two, not make believe it's real. Yeah. And then the third thing and the biggest thing that really sealed the deal, I believe with all my heart in the calling of God. Yep. I'm positive that the Lord called me to Sagemont. Yep. I'm positive of that. I'm positive that he called me to transition. Positive of that. And uh, uh, here through the physical realities mm -hmm. that, that got worse and the transitions were hard, it's no make-believe that even this transition yes. is hard. Mm -hmm. The first one was particularly hard on me yes. because of some of the things said. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. This one was no less hard in different ways. Sure. And you you know what I'm talking Absolutely. about. Ask yep. any minister here. Right. There was a lot of scuttlebutt yep. when transition takes place. We yes. all wish that Matt would have had a 30-year tenure sure. here, but he mm -hmm. didn't. Right. And, uh, and so... That got the birds to chirping once again, and there was a lot being said. And um, in the difficulty of the transition, uh, I began to process again, um, Lord, what would you have me to do? Mm -hmm. And then with the reality of Maureen's having another cancer scare, right. and she did. Many people don't know that, but she had to go to a specialist, and the right. specialist recommended a Biopsy, and it's a whole different area of right. of cancer, and so I was waiting for the result of the biopsy and crying out to the Lord for a release. Yeah, my first responsibility is really not the church. Yes, first responsibility is to the mate, and uh, uh, I was believing that <clears throat> if the biopsy came back positive, that I was going to resign immediately. Right. And I felt like it warranted that. Absolutely. I, I felt like it did. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so, uh, and I really believed because it was a specialist that said we need a biopsy, that right. that was the probability. And it was Valentine's morning and I was praying to the Lord. And uh, you remember Paul praying for the thorn of the flesh to be removed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a prayer like that. Yeah. Lord, I want to know that I know that it's okay. Right. For me to retire, yeah, to move on, to prioritize, and Betsy, as clear as I can tell you, the Lord said, "Chuck, you don't have to wait for a biopsy report mm. to move on." I love that. Yes, and so with that, I got great clarity. Mm -hmm. I got clarity from the Lord. You don't have to wait for a biopsy report. Right. You've been found faithful, and and I said, "Good," and so. Valentine's morning, I called Hudson Hanks, the chairman of the personnel team, and said, Hudson, I've got a clear word from the Lord 
now's the time. Yeah. And I don't need to wait for a biopsy. Now's the time. Mm -hmm. And, and I, so this is my formal resignation to you, the chairman of the personnel team. It's time for me to move on. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, like when? And I said, well, like right now. And he said, Chuck, that won't, that's not good. <laughs> he said, that would hurt the church. I said, I don't want to hurt the church. Sure. I said, let's go to the original date I gave Pastor Matt. Yeah. And, and so process, five-year process, physical realities, fellowship, and, and really a release from the Lord. Yeah. That, that, those are the, those are the, the, yeah. That's, the nuts and bolts. You know, um, getting to serve with you for almost the last 10 years on staff and being here at Sagemont for 20 plus years, um, I remember the first time I had a meeting with you and Brother John when I was just being interviewed for a women's ministry position. And one of the things you said to me, and you've said it to me many times since then, but it really stuck with me is, you need to know you're called. You need to know you're called because sometimes that's the only thing that's going to get you here on any given day. He told me that. Yes. And I, I mean, I've carried that with me for the last 10 years. You need it at times. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we do. And I, what a beautiful picture that God is now bookending your stay here with well done good and faithful servant you now can step away this it doesn't have to be your calling here anymore that's yeah. beautiful chuck i love that you probably will know um we prioritize the things that are important in our life and we know it god first we know it's family second we we know sure. churches down the time but when you're in the ministry sometimes that gets a little reversed it does it does. It can. Absolutely. It can. Yep. And I'm just compelled. I'm going to spend some time. People say, are you going to go fishing? I said, well, I get it. Yeah, I love fishing. I'm going to go fishing. That's not the priority here. Yeah. It really isn't. Yeah. I'm going to spend some time with my bride and we're going to do our thing. I love that. Yeah, we are. I love that so, yeah. so much. Um, so speaking of that, what are you looking forward to in retirement? Like, are you going to be like, I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to hang out in the pool. We're going to go travel. Uh, yeah. Like, what are, are y'all just like, we're just not going to do anything right now? <laughs> we, we were planning quickly. I have not been to the Ark in Kentucky. Yes, okay? I haven't either, but I hear and it's I, everybody amazing. Everybody raves about yes. it. And so I wanted to go to the Creation Museum yes. north of the mm -hmm. Ark and do the mm -hmm. Ark thing and do that. That's kind of on hold because of Mar Maureen's physical stuff right. and the blood clots and the heart right. and, you know, nuclear stress tests in a couple of weeks. And we don't really know the timeline right. on dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So so you can't book anything until right. you know. And so everything kind of got put on hold yeah. because of her physical reality. But mm -hmm. yes, uh, we discovered a few years back we like road trips. Mm -hmm. I could care less about getting on an airplane and doing an international flight for a long, long oh, time. It's coming for me real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, uh, our 50th is coming up in two years, That's and we awesome. were thinking Italy, but that after Israel, after the flight from Israel, yes. which was very difficult for her. Uh -huh. And uh, we've said, I don't know if we're going to do international. Yeah. We're going to do America stuff. And uh, we... We like road trips, and mm -hmm. we did one to Gettysburg and to Boston, and, and we did one with the Hendersons and the Burchams over to mm -hmm. Yellowstone I and that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, we're going to do some road trip stuff, and, and it's going to start in Kentucky. Uh, we'll probably do one up to the Badlands and, uh, mm. uh, you know, the, the, the national parks in South Dakota uh -huh. and Custer's Last Stand and that kind of thing. Cool. And, and we'll probably eventually do a cruise. She wants to do a cruise okay. in Alaska, the yes. Alaska cruise kind That's of thing. Beautiful. And so, yeah, we're going to play some and do some things like that. That's awesome. I love y'all are such a great representation of marriage. Y'all love each other so much. It, I mean, it's visible. You can see it the way you look at each other, the way you talk about each other. And to be almost 50 years, three kids. How many grandkids do y'all have now? Eight. Eight grandkids. Seven girls, one boy. All, you know, all in life inside the church and doing ministry together and to still love each other so much to love the Lord. It's such a great example to so many of us. And I just thank you both for living for the Lord and persevering and doing the right things even when it's really hard. John says, and you heard him say at the funeral we just went to, um, Preachers usually marry way over yes. and out, outside of their league. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm no exception. I married yeah. way over my head. Yeah. So, so She's blessed, a, blessed, lucky, miracle, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I love that so much. Yeah. Okay, so then the big question people ask all okay. the time is, where are you going to go? Are we going to see you? Are you going to oh. be around? Are you going to— Great question. Uh, this is my church home. Yeah. 
not going anywhere. Let me put an asterisk to that. Do you remember when, when the, the there was some wisdom given to us by by um, the the chairman of the Southern Baptist of Texas, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, it would be best if John stayed away for a season, mm -hmm. because. When anybody new comes in, there's always going to be some new interjected. And if people don't like it, they'll go running to John. Right. You, do you remember that? Sure. Absolutely. Um, that was true, and mm -hmm. it was wisdom. And mm -hmm. John did that, mm -hmm. and it was helpful. Yeah. And in many respects, the same thing is true with me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm going to take a season where this is not going to be my priority. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to purposefully stay away for a short season while the transition is completed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want people coming to me telling me what's yes. wrong. And I'm not going to fix say it. Say that again, I, everybody. I, I, I'm not going to try to fix it. You know, yes. and as they come to me now, yes. I said, not my problem. Yes. You know, I'm not going to try to fix right. it. It is such a way that those of us that love you and respect you and are so appreciative of you that right now, you're not the one to come and say, what's going on with this? And why is this this way? And y'all love Chuck well. Find, there's plenty of other, <laughs> there's plenty of other ministers to go to. This is a great church and it has yes. a great legacy and it has a great future. Yes. And we are in transition again. And there are aspects of transition that hurt last time. And there's aspects of transition that hurt this time. Yep. And no church on planet earth is perfect. Yep. Okay. And, uh, and we're in a, we're in a season of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, We've got yeah. good people. We've got good leadership. It's yeah. a great church, great and church. We, we, we're, we're desirous of our next great pastor to lead us uh, with, with passionate vision. Right. And we said publicly that whenever a person follows an icon like John Morgan, who's been here 50 years, usually it's 20 years is a, right. is a long one, yes. 50 years, that the guy that follows him traditionally 98% of the time has a very short window of ministry. Mm -hmm. And we experience that. Yep. Right, wrong, or indifference, we experience that. But it's the same data that says the guy that follows the short timer, that person has a long and prosperous ministry. And that's what we're looking that's for. We're the guy that has a long and prosperous ministry at Sagemont Church. Yep. To God be the glory. This Amen. is... It, I was reminded doing our fundraising for the Envision. Yes. This is a church that has a miraculous history. God's hand of blessing has been on this church in unbelievable ways. And I got to where I was taking it for granted. I think we do. I mean, absolutely. I, 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 when I got back in the book, knowing I was going to dialogue with Brother John and, and I got back into the history, mm -hmm. I was just reminded of just how prevalent God's hand of anointing was on our pastor and the miraculous did take place over and over again and I believe it took place again on the that's right. on the fundraising yep. for Envision mm -hmm. and so that's our past I, I happen to believe it'll be our future I think so too yeah I think so too um talking about that just tell me a little bit how are you right now praying for Sagemont Church yeah I wrote down it's really kind of three threefold um uh Obviously, I, I pray for the man of God that we don't even know yet. Yeah. You know, and I pray for the team that's involved searching for, mm -hmm. for that, that mm -hmm. person. Um, that's a laborious process uh, that I know a little bit about. Yeah. And, and I'm praying that uh, we see him and that he sees us yeah. and that God brings both parties together and that it is a unanimous. He knows it. We know it. Everybody knows it. So that's, mm -hmm. I guess, the highest sure. rung on the ladder. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's good. Um, I'm praying healing takes place. Yes. Um, I saw the hurt the first time around. It was real. It was very real. It was real. Mm -hmm. And I see the hurt this time around. Mm -hmm. It's not make-believe. It's real. It's real. It's part of transition. Mm -hmm. You know, when you love, you know, whatever it is you love, and it changes, you know, you hurt. Yep. And so I, I pray for healing for, for this bride, yeah. that we can have great season again. And I, I pray for fruit. Um 
we have a long history of incredible spiritual fruit. Mm -hmm. We do. Everybody knows about the debt freedom and how God used the debt freedom. But we also have a long history of a whole lot of baptisms and a whole lot of growth. That's part of the history. And I don't know why you're going to be a church if you're not thinking in terms of souls saved and That's lives right. changed and people being equipped and, yep. and and growth isn't a bad thing. Nope. You know, I just don't want to go to a big church. Well, it gets big for a reason. Right. It, you know, and if you're just a tiny church all your life, uh, yeah. what's wrong with that? Wrong? And, and so this was a tiny church that grew up in the 40 years that I've been here. Yeah. And it was already growing up when I got right. here. And uh, uh, we've seen great seasons of unbelievable spiritual fruit. Mm -hmm. That's plateaued somewhat, and that's real normal when you go through transition. Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, it has not plateaued or re reduced the way I thought it probably mm -hmm. would happen. You know, in Max, Matt's exodus, I think we added a thousand people, mm -hmm. and most of those were younger people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in 30s and 40s and that kind of thing, and that, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And uh, here we are, seven, eight months down the timeline, and 800 of them are locked in here. This Absolutely. is their church home. Absolutely. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't go. Right. You, you'd have thought Matt left, they'll leave. They came because of Matt. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. They've yeah. gotten an iConnect, they bonded, this right. is their church home. Yep. That, they're here. Yep. And that's a good thing. But we've plateaued in that we're not seeing more growth, and that's pretty normal when you don't even have a sure. pastor. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that we aren't declining. seeing a reduction, yes. declining. Yes. It's a wonderful thing, and we're not seeing declining in the budget. That's it's right. You know, it's just stable. Mm -hmm. And stable is good. But what am I praying for? Yeah, fruit, great yeah. fruit again. Souls saved, lives changed, budget growing radically, and winning more people than ever mm -hmm. before. And I don't know that too many are praying that way yet. Yeah. You know, just... just That's true, baby. Just, uh, Lord... Yeah. Your your hand of blessing has been here a long, long time. I don't believe you're through with us yet. No. Transitions are hard. Uh, we experience the norm in a brief tenure of Pastor Matt. Right. Yeah, but now we're we're expecting long tenure and great fruit. Yeah. May it be so. That's that's kind of my prayer, Kev. Absolutely. My prayer. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that so yeah. much. And then just as you're in this season of getting ready to transition. How are you just even praying for yourself yeah, great. and for Maureen and for the girls? Because it is a big transition for your family. Uh, uh, we're focusing on prayer mm -hmm. as a church family. Yes. And that's real good. Yes. That's real good. We're known for being a financial debt-free church. Oh, that we would be known to be a praying, praying church. church. Yes. And... Uh, I'm sorry, this is almost a pet peeve for me over the years. Uh, we would have seasons of prayer, and we would have, this is the time you come to pray. And all too often, just personal Betsy, all too often it turn, it would turn into a physical infirmity list. List. Yes. You know, and that got real frustrating yeah. for me personally. Talking about praying, The not same people praying. bringing back the same mm -hmm. list of mm -hmm. physical mm -hmm. infirmities. And, and I just believe personally, since you've asked, yeah. prayer's a lot more. It is inclusive of physical infirmity. Absolutely. But it's so much more than just that. Yeah. And so, yes, what am I doing? Yeah, I do have a time in the morning. You know, I, I almost always wake up before morning. It's sun's usually never up. And I usually go to the study. And in the uh, there's a time of prayer. That's yeah. a focused time of prayer. But when people ask me, when's your focused time of prayer? It is it is then, quiet time with the right. Lord, but it is really intentional all day long. It's it's while I'm driving and whatever comes to my mind, mm -hmm. I pray about that. It's while I'm in church and somebody says, would you pray for me by, about this? Right. Okay, let's stop right now in church yep. as the people are walking. And there's an there's an old acronym that I kind of embraced 25 years ago in ministry ACTS mm -hmm. A C T S yes and that kind of became a norm for me and and so A is for acknowledgement God you are a great God C is for confession I'm not so great you know, acknowledgement of how great Thou art confession of the things you're out of bounds in, uh, thanksgiving. And then the last one is supplication. Yeah. The, the last one is, this is my list. This is on my okay? yeah. mm -hmm. And I think it's the right place. You yeah. know, get the other parts right. The adoration, acknowledgement, adoration, A, you know, confession, woe is me, right. I'm undone. Thanksgiving, you're a good God. And then the supplication. Mm -hmm. All too often, it seems to me, all too often we Christians 
get it backwards. We do. It's about supplication and, oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. And, oh, yeah, you're a great God. And, and oh, yeah, I confess my waywardness. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we would get priorities right in prayer mm -hmm. and acknowledge his goodness and every good gift comes from above mm -hmm. and uh, and praise him for that and acknowledge that and um, adore him mm -hmm. uh, it goes a long way into um, into plowing the heart so that we can get mm -hmm. to the supplication I love that so that's kind of me that's beautiful I love that so much so um, Chuck I know I speak for myself and I know so many others there are not enough words to tell you thank you for what you have done for the Lord here at this church yes, and in there this are. body there are enough words we don't need <laughs> Maureen, like, got, Maureen made words. me do this I mean she, <laughs> Receptions. Maureen, church is about the Lord. It's not about it the person. It is, and, but okay. you do such a great job pointing to the Lord that we can tell him thank you for you. We're telling him thank you for she sending you. She said we're you. doing this. I said, Maureen, He's she said it's man. not about you. It's not about you. It's, it's people want to say. We want to say thank okay. you. Okay. You're, you're fantastic. And you just, and I love that because I, I know this about you. Um, even once you're retired and taking a break, if somebody needs something. Well, yeah, you said this is there. my church home. Yeah, yeah we're going to be away for a season. I'm going to go back to the Methodist church I grew up in just cool. to go. That's awesome. You know, when I said, you know, it's going to be liberal. I said, yeah, it's going to, but I grew up there. Right. I just want to go sit and watch yeah. and look. And, and we'll probably do that at a couple of other places. But this is our church home. Absolutely. This is where we will. We will land. Yeah. This is this is our church home, and we look forward to a, a different season. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. you know, pe I, let me regress a little bit. People say I've had it thrown in my face a number of times. It's not biblical for a preacher re to retire. Mm. You know, I've heard that sure. Charles Stanley believed it, and uh, I Charles Stanley was one of the greatest preachers in yes. America. Yeah. And yet, when he turned into his nineties. From my perspective, I listened and watched Charles Stanley for 20 years. He was the best of the best. And yet when he turned 90-something, you could shoot a cannon in the middle of First Atlanta and not hit anybody. Yeah. It just, the change was real. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as recently as Sunday, when I got ready to teach the class on retirement, yes. I had a man come up to me, former minister says hello, but he doesn't believe in retirement. And so I've had to address that question yeah. over and over again. And first of all, there is a, I did find a, uh, you know, proof text that deals with it. There, there is a, there is a text. Go, go check me out, folks. Numbers 8, 24 through 26. This applies to the Levites. Those were the priests, okay? Uh, men 25 years old or more shall come to take part in the work of the tent of the meeting. In other words, maturity level, you can't mm -hmm. start doing it until you're 25, uh, but at the age of 50, they must retire from their regular service and work no longer. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of the meeting, but they themselves must not do the work. This then is how you are to assign the responsibilities of the Levites. So for people that say there's no place in the Bible to retire, you've got to go check out there's Numbers one. 8, 24. And you say, well, you found a proof text. Yes, I did. That That's exactly what it that's says, right. okay? And then it also is... <laughs> Man, God calls us to share the gospel our whole life. He doesn't call us to vocational ministry our well, whole life. That's lives. where I was going. Yeah. That's where I was going. It, it, it would be unscriptural to not use the spiritual gifts God's Absolutely. given me going into retirement. Right. But to stay at the job I've stayed at, uh, you know, when you work many, many years, at it, whether you're a fireman, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a doctor, when you've done something for 20, 30, but you're probably at the top of the pecking order mm -hmm. of the salary structure. And... Uh, um, Maureen had to ask me. She said, Chuck, he's been good to us this long. You know, do you do, do you continue to do what you're doing for the salary? Right. You know, or do you trust the Lord? Mm -hmm. And so that's a real, that's a real issue. Yes. It's a real, a real issue. Real conversation. And yep. most of us wonder, is there enough money at the end of life? You know, but that's a normal thing. Absolutely. But at some point you got to ask, am I persevering because of the finances yeah. or do I trust the Lord even through this transition and even if you wanted to debate retirement transitions are part of the Bible yeah, you know go, sure. read, go read Ecclesiastes yes. the first chapter you know yep. transitions are a part of our life Absolutely. all the way through it yep. and then we all have a eternal transition it is, it is appointed in a demand so right. 
the money thing, I think, is real in almost every person's life. For sure. Moving towards that that end zone. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, Martin had to say, we've trusted him this far. We can trust him through this transition. Right. I love that. So, so good. So Thank you for coming and hanging out. I, I love getting thank, to talk with you. Thank you. It's always so fun. May the Lord bless you guys and gals going into the future. Yeah, he's going to do good things because he always does. Hey, and I'll also tell y'all on Ju- Sunday, July 16th, we are going to have a reception. He's very excited about it. A reception in the lobby after the 1115 service. Everyone is welcome. Uh, Chuck and Maureen will be there. Um, if you want to bring a card, we'll have a place for you to drop a card. Uh, there'll be cookies and all the fun things for a reception to really just tell uh, Brother Chuck thank you. So July 16th, Sunday, July 16th, right after 1115 service in the lobby, we will have that. So you plan on joining us for that. So thank you, Betsy. it's going to be great. Okay. All right. Love you, Chuck. Y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We will see you next time on Table Talk. Bless you.